chemistry time. <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk about solutions a little bit more. Let's call this one um, solutions, and we're gonna put in parentheses a subtitle. Yeah. Concentrations. <laughs> Concentrations, pretend I spelled it right, or pretend I made the pen. This looks like concentrations. Concentrations and, mm, I don't know, saturation. Let's call it that. Concentrations and saturation. So, um, from your bell work, and we didn't talk about this part of the bell work yet because I was going to talk about it with you on the, the YouTube. Um, how do we normally think about concentration? Like, where have you seen measurements of concentration in your life before? Concentration is... Yeah, what um, is concentration? Well, I'll start with that. Let's do start with that, actually. I'm sorry. We'll come back to that question. But first, let's start. What is concentration? We could think about it as the ratio of what to what in the solution. Um, particles? Mm, more specific. Ratio of what to what? What are the two things that make up a solution? You know it. Particles. Yeah, well, yeah, so particles. <laughs> but what are the things that make up the solution? A and a, a solute and a solvent. So the ratio of solute to solvent in a solution is called the concentration. Where have you ever seen concentration before? Was the question I was trying to ask you. Um. Well. When you like have like tea that sits out for a very long time, the color starts to go down. Go there you go. Okay, so if you let your tea steep for too long, right, we can have we can think about weak tea we might call it versus strong tea, right? Which of those is more concentrated? The darker. Tea. The darker. The darker tea. The stronger tea is more concentrated. So, um, if we're talking about solute and solvent, which uh, which of them has a higher ratio of solute to solvent? First of all, in the tea, what's the solute? Like the well, the tea. We'll just call it tea, but they have the, there's lots of different stuff that makes it up, right? There's lots of chemical compounds, yeah. but we'll say the tea itself is the solute. What's the solvent? Water. The water. Uh -huh. So which one has a higher ratio of solute to solvent? The darker, the darker tea, the, the more steeped tea. Um, so the, and that's what we call a qualitative, uh, that's what we call a qualitative uh, definition of concentration, right? So I could say, Oh boy, I like my Kool-Aid strong. Right? <laughs> Some people really do, I bet. Um, but I like mine watered down. Like yeah, there you like, go. I don't like there. So here. some people, I was making fun of people who had an opinion about them, but you actually do. Um, so <laughs> she likes her Kool-Aid weak, right? She likes it to have a low ratio of solute to solvent, right? I like mine very like sugary. No, there I hate go. that. There we go. Look, we all have opinions. I don't actually because I don't like Kool-Aid that much. But so what? What can we do um, to measure this mathematically? Right, because these are all strong, weak. Those are qualitative measures of concentration. What could we do, probably, to measure mathematically? Use an equation. Yes, but what? Where, where have you seen mathematical measurements of concentration? On your, on your, on your vehicle, on your glass of of tea. Probably. Oh, well, no, I'm talking about numbers. Where can you tell like numbers? Yeah, like on that little, um, like if there's like a little. Oh, maybe like so something like your sunny you might say contains 0.001% juice, right? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so that is a measure of concentration. So that percentage can be used as a measure of concentration. So we have this one, we call it percent weight by volume. That's one way of measuring concentration. Um, that's not actually one that your book talks about at all, but uh, your book will call it this, mass, lowercase m over capital V. So should we have it Yeah. Percent mass by volume. That one's quite infrequently used. It's weight by volume is used quite a bit in America. Your book would call it mass by volume. That one's almost never used. But we also have this one. This one's much more common. Percent volume by volume, right? So that's like uh, the volume of whatever is being dissolved, the solute, divided by the volume of the solution. And this is what's really important about these is it's percent mass of solute over volume in the, in the first one of what? Can you guess? Be careful though. Of uh, sol solvent. No. no. Solution, the total solution. Oh. Um, and then this one it'll be percent mass, or sorry, volume of solute by volume 
of solution, the whole thing, right? And I hope you understand. For most for most cases, it's it's better and easier for us to measure the volume of the whole thing afterward. For instance, uh, like if you have if you're making just sugar water, I don't know why you ever would, but for you put plants. in for your what plants for your pl mm. oh. never mind. You're making sugar water for your plants, <laughs> and you're gonna put in. For instance, in this one, you might put in 10 grams of sugar per liter of solution, right? So you put 10 grams in a bucket, and then you pour in enough water that now you have a liter of the whole solution, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to do this one, you might have uh, 50 milliliters of sugar, and then enough water to make one liter of the solution. This is how I make solutions in the lab. It'll tell me how much mass of copper sulfate or whatever, and then I add enough water to make one liter. And right, the difference is, I, I hope you're understanding the difference between adding one liter of water and adding enough water to make one liter, right? Do you see the difference there? Mm -hmm. In the first one, I would have a liter of water and pour it into my massive copper sulfate or whatever, sugar, whatever it is. In the second one, I pour in enough water to make a total solution of one liter, right? Right. So in these ones, it's volume of solution. Be careful because that changes pretty soon. The most, the most common one that we use in uh, chemistry is this thing called molarity. Molarity, which is represented by the lowercase letter m. Um, kind of inconveniently because that's also what mass is. But in molarity, all it is is moles of solute. How can we find moles? How can we calculate moles? If we have, uh, well, yeah. So like, if I wanted to go in the lab and I wanted to say I need one mole of copper sulfate, how would I actually measure it? Uh, like, SOP. No, it's not a gas. I have. If I want, if I wander into the lab with you and I say, let's go get one mole of copper sulfate, how would we find one mole of copper sulfate? Then we have to know the. Yeah, what's that called? Yeah, yeah, atomic mass, but we also call that the molar mass. molar mass. Yeah, so we would use the molar mass of copper sulfate, right? We'd add up Cu plus S plus O times 4, and that would give us the molar yeah. mass. And we'd measure for one mole, we'd measure that mass of it, right? Anyway, so we have moles of solute, which we'd have to convert probably, per liter, oh, sorry, I should put, yeah, let's just put liter, of solution. Moles of solute per liter of solution. That probably should say volume, but since we measure this as a just a set a number, like we'd sometimes say this is a 2.0 molar solution, it always has to be per one liter. So the equation is m. Over yeah, moles of solute divided by one liter of solution. Even if you end up actually using less or making less, we still do this calculation to find the molarity. So what does it look like? Moles of solute. So be moles. So no, is it m equals moles? Yeah, this lowercase m, molarity, equals moles of solute divided by one liter of solution. And it's important that we have solute and solution here, right? Because this is going to change in one second. The next one we have is molality. Why do they have to make something so confusing? I don't know. This one's capital M, which is also confusing. Molality is moles, once again, of solute. But it's divided this time by one kilogram of solvent. So it's doubly confusing. It's triply confusing. It has the same letter, just capitalized. Quadruply confusing, because it has the same almost word. Now it's moles of solute per mass, this time, kilogram, of solvent, not of solution. Four times confusing. Just make sure you keep these straight, right? Molarity is moles per liter. Molality is moles per kilogram of solvent, not solution. And the last one that we commonly use is mole fraction. Mole fraction, which is moles of solute divided by moles of solute plus moles of solvent. And that's the quantity. We do that first in parentheses. What's the abbreviation for mole? M-O-L. What? M-O-L, which as abbreviations go, uh, that's not so, great. Well, I didn't know if it was like mole fraction or stuff. Oh, well, we just write out mole fraction. Sometimes mole fraction is expressed as just x.
Hold on. What Not yet. Here's something. Mole solute and mole solvent. Is that yeah. plus mole So we generally put things like this. X of A, right? X sub A equals moles of A over moles of A plus moles of B. Moles of A plus moles of B, where A is the solute and B is the A is solute. Stick around, little bottle. B is solvent. Is that for mole fraction? Yes. Um, none of these, I wouldn't say, is complicated, right? They're all simple math. What's going to be the difficult part of this? That doesn't mean they're not difficult. What's going to be difficult? Keeping it all straight in your brain, right? An organized person will have a much easier time with this than a disorganized person, right? Because they all have very similar things, right? The, the math itself is not hard. What's going to be tricky is figuring out where to put what. One last thing before we move on to saturation and agitation and stuff like that is we're going to talk about this dilution equation, which I'm putting a little box over here, kind of like an aside. Dilution equation. This is one, probably practically, like in a practical sense, the thing that is used the most in actual chemistry laboratories. Right? All this stuff is fun. We're learning, I think it's fun. We're learning about this mostly what we sometimes call theoretical. Right? This, is, this is almost like pure research. A lot of this stuff is interesting to know about and it's important for us to have the background so that we can understand what's happening. But this one is actually used on a practical level in almost all laboratories. And it is this, just this. M1 capital V1 equals M2 capital V2. Where, I'm sorry, that should be, hold on a second, I got it wrong. You're going to have to forgive me. I think molality is actually lowercase m and molarity is actually capital M. How embarrassing. Yes, that's right. Molarity is capital M. <clears throat> molality is lowercase m. And that means over here, this should be capital M and this should be capital M. And I guess if you're not in a forgiving mood, then you'll just have to move past it. But you should forgive me. I would like it better if you did. Thank you for sighing heavily, heavily, and raising your eyebrows. That makes me feel guilty, as which I deserve. Raised, as raised, yeah. <laughs> Molality is lowercase m. Molarity is capital N. I'm so sorry. Anyway, the dilution equation is used when we have a concentration of a substance, and we know its volume, and we want to find, we want to make that concentration usually lower. We can only really make it lower. So for instance, we will a lot of times use it with stock solutions. I, like for instance in the lab I have a stock solution of what's called 12.0 molar hydrochloric acid, right? That's, that's considered, we don't say the word pure, but that's considered concentrated hydrochloric acid. But I never want to use, almost never, want to use that concentration. I don't want it to be that concentrated, and so I dilute it. So I want to figure out what volume of concentrated hydrochloric acid I should put in to make my volume, I, for instance, let's say I want, let's just do this practice problem. I'm going to take my concentrated hydrochloric acid out of the lab, and I want to make one liter of three molar hydrochloric acid. Okay, and so I need to figure out how much of my concentrated hydrochloric acid do I put in, and then I add water to make up one liter. So I want one liter of three molar. So what's my molarity? First of all, what am I trying to find out of this? From my example. Um, no molarity and volume. Well, which one am I trying to find? Though one of those is right. Volume. Yeah, I want to try to find volume one, right? I want to find the volume of the concentrated hydrochloric acid I want to use. So V1 equals M2V2 over M1. My molarity two, what's my molarity two? You remember I just said it, I didn't write it down or anything. 3.0 molar. And how much of that did I want? 1.00 liter over, what was my initial molarity? 12.0 molar. It's really sim pretty simple math. 3 times 1 is? 3. Divided by 12 is? Uh, like point 0.25 what? Oh yeah, moles. No. No, liters. Liter. 
So I would add, to make this solution happen, I would add 0 0.25 liters of my concentrated hydrochloric acid, and then I would add enough water to make one liter of my solution. As a, as a side note of this side note, when you're, con when you're using concentrated acid and you're diluting it, you should always, listen to me, Hadley, it's a safety concern, always add acid. Always add acid. A, A, A. If you add the water first, which is what I just told you to do, if you add the water first, the acid sometimes, especially sulfuric acid, can boil, and then it like, you know, you get concentrated sulfuric acid spraying out the top of your little vessel, getting in your eyes and all over your clothes and everything. So you should always add the acid. So what I would do, the correct procedure for this is I would add, probably since I know I want a liter, and I know I'm going to have to add 250 liters, or sorry, 250 milliliters, I would probably fill up my little container to about 500 milliliters of water, add my 250 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid slowly, mm -hmm. and then I would fill it up to a liter with water the rest of the way. Um, that's just the general procedure, that way we can stay safe. Uh, let's move on now. We have this uh, next thing we're going to talk about. Do you have questions about any of this? Hopefully not about AAA. You've got to remember AAA. No. Nope. Questions about dilution equation? No. Nope. Questions about these mathematical representations of concentration? No. Okay. So write down now factors affecting solvation. And we have little time left, so we're going to say them really loud and really proud. Factors, factors affecting, A, affecting, factors affecting, affect verb, effect noun generally. Factors affecting solvation. What's solvation? While I erase this, tell me what solvation is probably. Well, can you guess? Solvation. How fast something does what? Dissolves. Dissolves, yeah. Factors affecting solvation. You already know some. How can you make something dissolve faster? You do this in your daily life lots of times. How can you make something dissolve faster? Water on it. Well, okay, so the water is the solvent. We're going to always... Heat the water up. Okay, yeah. One, temperature. How is that proportional? Higher temperature means faster dissolving or the other yeah. way around? Yes. So this is directly proportional. What's another one? How else can we make it dissolve faster? Uh, what do you do when you want it to dissolve fast? Oh, my mom's coming. I gotta make it dissolve fast. What do you do? Yeah. What's it, what do? Go faster. Shake it. Shake, 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 uh, shake it. Shake, 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 shake it. Agitation is what we call that. Agitation. <laughs> the faster we shake it, the faster it dissolves. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's what kind of proportional? Directly. Directly proportional. And can you think of the last one? You did this in earth science last year. What's going to dissolve faster, a sugar cube or the same mass of sugar in a packet? The same mass of sugar in a packet. Yeah. Boys we can basketball practice at 4 o'clock. Increase girls basketball practice surface at 5 o'clock. Boys at area. 4 o'clock, girls at 5 o'clock. Will, will increasing the surface area increase the rate of solvation or decrease it? Decrease it. Try again. Decrease. Increase it. So what kind of proportional is that? Directly. Directly proportional. They're all directly proportional. Higher temperature, faster solvation. Higher agitation, faster solvation. Higher surface area, faster solvation. Questions about that?